الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions and his followers until the Day of Judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you all to a new episode of the Magnificent Seven. The seven people the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described by saying, seven are whom Allah will put them in his shade in the Day of Judgment when there is no shade but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's shade, the shade of his throne. A just ruler, a youth who grow up with the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to the masjids, two persons who love each other, meet each other, depart from each other for the sake of Allah. A man whom an extremely beautiful woman seduces him, but he rejects her offer by saying, I fear Allah. A person who gives in charity and conceal it to the extent his left hand will not know what his right hand is giving. And finally, a person who remembers Allah in solitude and his eyes well up. My dear brothers and sisters, we're still talking about the last category. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the greatest acts of worship, it's not only an act of worship, human beings or jinn practicing it. It's the act of worship of all creation. The whole universe are actually glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to سبح له السماوات السبع والأرض ومن فيهن وإن من شيء إلا يسبح بحمده ولكن لا تفقهون تسبيحه إنه كان حليما غفورا And this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the seven heavens and the earth and all is uh, therein glorifying him and there is not a thing but glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can understand their glorifying or their tasbih. My brothers and sisters, Allah told us that the mountain used to make tasbih with Dawood. Ya jibalu, awwi bi ma'ahu wa tayr. Mountains and birds used to glorify and making tasbih and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Dawood alayhi salam, with Prophet David. سَخَّرْنَا الْجِبَالَ مَعَهُ يُسَبِّحْنَا The mountain used to make tasbih with him whenever he makes tasbih. Dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal is not restricted to certain type of people. It's something everybody practicing. It is the act of worship which is the most common act of worship between all creation in this universe. My brothers and sisters, وَالنَّجْمُ وَالشَّجَرُ يَسْجُدَانِ The tree and the najm, which is a very small tree, has, it's like the grass and the tree which is high in the sky, both making sujood, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا and the men and the women who remember Allah much 
Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward, and a great reward. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the easiest act of worship, but the reward of it is so great. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will be pleased with you. If you eat something, then you would say, Alhamdulillah. Just by saying Alhamdulillah after you finish your food, Allah will be pleased with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sin, even if it's as much as the foam of the sea. If you only say, if you only say 100 times, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Whenever you make salat and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa perform the salat and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim Whenever you say, Oh Allah, put your prayer, your salat, which it means your praise, Praise Muhammad and plus Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family. And as you blessed and you praise Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you do this salat wa salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the same to you. Allah will praise you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pronounce your name in front of his angel. Proud, so proud of you. Just a few words you say it by your mouth. So why we're not taking advantage of this great act of worship? The Prophet ﷺ said, iman. This wudu that you do before salat is shatrul iman, half of faith, half of faith. Alhamdulillah, tamla'ul mizan. Just saying alhamdulillah. It will fill up your skill, which it means at the Day of Judgment, when your skill will be in front of you, the word Alhamdulillah, the reward of it is so big, is so heavy, that it will fill up your, your skill. And Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Tamla'a ma bayna samai wal ard. Saying Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ said, these two words, just by saying them, will fill up what between the sky and the earth. Imagine how much reward you will get by saying Subhanallah Walhamdulillah. The best dhikr is to read Al-Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said Al-Quran afdal al-dhikr. Al-Quran is the best dhikr. The best form of dhikr is to recite Al-Quran. Every time you recite a verse from the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give you for each letter 10 hasana, 10 reward. Alif, Lam, Mim is not one word. Alif is not one letter. Alif is one letter. Lam is another one. Mim is the third one. So Alif, Lam, Mim, this is only, when you say only Alif, Lam, Mim, you will be getting, in your, you will be getting a reward of 30 reward, 30 hasana, just by saying Alif, Lam, Mim. So how about reading Al-Quran? Reading, at least as the Prophet ﷺ said, at least you should read, 10 verse every day, so you will not be among al-ghafileen, those who don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been approached by a group of his companions, but those companions among the poorest in Medina, the poorest people in Medina, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and they complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about the rich, people of Medina. They complain about rich ones. But what do you think their complaint was about? Was it about, was it about how come they are rich and we are poor? How come that they have luxury life and we are not? How come that they been treated a special treatment like as if they are a leech member in the society and we're not been treated good? No, no. You know what was the problem? They said, Ya Rasulullah, those rich ones, they have so much money. And we're not looking for it to be like them rich. No, that's not the point. They said, whatever act of worship we do, they do like us. If we fast, they fast. If we pray, they pray like us. So, it ends up that we are equal in this area. But they have extra money. 
they donated for the sake of Allah and we don't have any money to donate. So we end up less than them. They can do more than us. The Prophet ﷺ told them, I will teach you something better than spending golds and silvers for the sake of Allah. Better than spending golds and silver for the sake of Allah, Ya Rasulullah? Yes. They said, sure, tell us. The Prophet ﷺ told them, whenever you finish your prayer, say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, 30 times, 33 times. After each prayer, this is better than spending golds and silver for the sake of Allah. When the Sahaba heard that, they were so excited, those people, and they start saying this after each salah. So the rich one in the community heard them saying that. They ask about it. They start investigating what this new dhikr that those people are saying. And they've been told what the Prophet ﷺ told them. So the rich one starts saying the same thing. Starts saying the same thing. And now the poor people again became mad and sad. They came to the Prophet ﷺ complaining. Saying, Ya Rasulullah, the rich one among our community starts saying like us. And again, we became equal, but they have extra money to spend for the sake of Allah, and we don't have. The Prophet ﷺ smiled and said, This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, that He made whoever He wants rich and whoever He wants poor. So be satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for you. The point is that. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the salat, the Prophet considered that better than spending gold and silver for the sake of Allah. In another hadith, which is reported by Abu Darda, the Prophet said, Ala ukhbirukum bi khayri a'malikum wa arfa'iha li darajatikum. Do you want me to tell you the best of deeds that you can ever offer and it will raise your station in Jannah? Wa azkaha inda malikukum and the most accepted one. In front of, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. And better than giving silver and gold for the sake of Allah. It's even better than participating in jihad, in qital, in fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's better than all of that? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Dhikrullah, remembering Allah, remembering Allah better than all of that. My brothers and sisters, the best way, as I said, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading Al Quran, by mentioning His name, by glorifying Him, and the best of all to always say, La ilaha illallah. We'll have a break, then we come back, inshallah, soon. Why, righteous companions, it is Islam that given us the sense of dignity. I love all of them in a way that you cannot imagine. That Umar ibn Khattab an would say something and the Quran would come down matching what he said. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه Just compare, compare what you did for Islam with just one of them. Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters, to continue our discussion about the importance and the virtues of dhikrullah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I've been saying, this act of worship is so easy to be practiced all the time. And I think we should take advantage of every single moment of our life. No matter where you're at, just try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only place we're not allowed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it, inside the bathroom, when the person go to the bathroom. This is the only time the person 
should not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that, we, re we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all other situations. So for instance, if my sister in her kitchen, or if she is with her baby breastfeeding him, or if she is inside her house, uh, taking care of her house, I think it's a good idea for her to remember to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, all the time. Do you know, one of my shaykhs, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him, Shaykh Abdul Aziz Baz rahimahullah ta'ala. I haven't seen anybody like him in my whole entire life. He always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the time. Wallahi, sometimes, even when people asking him question, while he's listening to the question, he will be saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. He will not let any moment goes by without filling these moments with this act of worship, with saying words to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, or to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And dhikrullah azza wa jal, dhikrullah azza wa jal levels. And as you heard earlier, the best dhikr or the best form of dhikr is to, the best form of dhikr is to read Al-Quran. Then after that, to pronounce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes, to mention them, to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to know, it's not from the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not from the practice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or his companions, to say or to pronounce Allah's names by themselves. As a matter of fact, the scholar considered this as a form of innovation, to say Allah, Allah, or Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman. This is not the way to, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to add to it something. So it makes any, so it makes sense. You say Subhanallah, or Alhamdulillah, or La ilaha illallah, or Allahu Akbar. This is the way to do it. Some people say, you just say Allah, Allah, or Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman, or Quddus, Quddus. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi never ever, ever remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi always taught us to say it in a complete sentence. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Also, remembering Allah or Dhikrullah Azza wa Jal should be according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. That's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu ardah, when he was told by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu ardah in Kufa, that there is a group of people gathered in the masjid of Kufa, the masjid of Al-Kufa. And those people were making dhikr collectively, in congregation, all of them together saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, what they call like dhikr jama'i, and a man, leading this group and saying, say subhanAllah, then everybody saying together. When Ibn Mas'ud heard about that, he approached them and told them, this is not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you either starting innovation in the religion, or you have a better religion than the religion of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. إِمَّا أَنَّكُمْ عَلَى مِلَّةٍ أَهْدَى مِنْ مِلَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَوْ مُفْتَتِحُ بَابِ ضَلَالَةِ order them to leave the masjid and not to do that again and not to do this again in the masjid. Also Ibn Waddah and this narration is an authentic narration reported by Imam al-Darimi rahimahullah. Also Ibn Waddah reported in his book about al-Bida' another narration that Ibn Umar radiallahu an passed by a group of people doing the same thing and Ibn Umar radiallahu an stopped them from doing that and told them this is not the way the Prophet sallallahu used to make dhikr. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum never gather collectively and make a dhikr all together like that. That's why it's very important for us when we try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we try to make dhikr, we make it according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Also, it is so uh, sad that you see some people misrepresent uh, the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam by adding to it what's not from it. For instance, some people when they want to make dhikr, what they do? They gather together and they mix dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dancing and bringing drums and start 
jumping up and down as if the person who's making dhikr, he is insane or he is, is dancing. It became like a joke. This is not the way the dhikr should be. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu said that we are going to follow the steps of the nations before us. As we see sometimes in some other religion, their way of dhikr is just like going to party. Somebody, it's the music and somebody singing and people like going left and right and dancing. The same thing sometimes you see it and some Muslims, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu They do something similar to that. This is not the way of the Prophet sallallahu to make dhikr. Dhikrullah azza wa jal should bring tranquility to the people, should bring, should make the person feel calm and feel that he in a status of as if he's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, so many people also when we talk about dhikr, they think dhikr Allah is only, it only means for them to make dua, to ask something, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you something. This is one type of dhikr, this one type of dua. But also dhikr Allah could be by only glorifying Allah. That's why la ilaha illallah is the best dhikr. La ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika la. The best dua you can ever say in the day of Arafah. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is the best ever I said and any, uh, any Prophet before me in the day of Arafah. So dhikrullah Azza wa Jal means that you remember him, you glorify him, you mention him subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and with his attributes according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The hadith mentioned also something else, that that person who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nobody around him, his eyes well up, he starts crying. That's a sign that that person's heart is soft. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, any eyes, any eyes will cry for the sake of Allah. Cry because he remember his sins and he remember the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't deserve to be disobeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great and his punishment is so severe. So the person will be afraid to disobey him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also on another hand, so great and supposedly that you love him so much. And because of that love and respect, you feel sorry that you have committed that sin. And that might bring your tears down. If this has happened to you, if this has happened to you, you are among the lucky one. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, if anybody cry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this eyes will not be touched by the hellfire. It will be saved in the day of judgment. To, it will be saved in the day of judgment to cry in the hellfire because it's already crying in this dunya from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from the love and respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Crying, not necessarily to be with loud voice as we hear sometimes. No, the Sahaba radiallahu used to cry, but they're crying without a, a voice or long or loud voices. But you can tell that the person is crying. And this is the way the Prophet ﷺ used to cry as well. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Ask Ibn Mas'ud to recite for him verses from the Quran. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an start reciting verses from Surah An Nisa. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an said, I raised my head and I found the Prophet sallallahu crying when I reached this verse. Yawma na'ti min kulli ummatin bi shaheed wa ji'na bika ala haulai shaheeda. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, sometimes Sahaba will Notice that he's crying while he's praying because of the voice that he will try to control. He will try to control his, his crying without, uh, he will try to control his uh, crying so it will not be with any loud voice. Some people when they cry, they might cry in a very loud voice. Is this something not good? Is it something haram? Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, 
it depends. If the person is weak, he cannot control himself, and this has happened uh, without, uh, uh, inten without intention, that he can't control himself. He's a weak person. When he cry, he just can't control himself. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, this is something out of control, but this is not something to be praised with, because that shows your weakness. It's not something good. But if somebody do it just to show off that he is a soft heart and he cry and something and things from this nature, no doubt this is itself a sin and this is showing off. This is riyah, and the Muslim should not be involved in such thing. In Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's been reported in several occasions that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried once when he saw his friend and his companion Uthman ibn Mavroon dead in front of him, and also when he attend one of Al Ansar funeral, he told the Sahaba radiallahu anhum after they buried their friend, he told them, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, prepare yourself from for this day. Prepare yourself for this day when you will be replaced in your grave. While the Prophet is crying, as reported by Abi Dawood and others. My brothers and sisters, this hadith have covered seven, seven different kind of people. And as you see, all of them, they have something common in between them. That they all have fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all remember and realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over them and watching them. The just ruler who is just, just because he want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, the power that Allah has given him, he can use it to do what is not just or to gain what is not supposed to have. And the youth who grow up with worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used that power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so gave it to him in his body. That desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put it in, inside himself, he was not slave to his own self. He was slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He realized that he is slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was created in this earth to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So he committed himself and go against his desires to be a righteous person. The person whose heart attached to the masjid, he loved to go to the masjid. Even though in masjids, you don't make money. In masjids, you don't go to fulfill some of your lust or desires but you go there but you but you go there because you because you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the two people who love each other for the sake of Allah meet and depart from each other only for the sake of Allah also the dunya was not involved they did that because they want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the person who has control over his lust and love for the money that he donate and the other person prevent himself from accepting the effort of the person who trying to seduce him. They did that only because they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, he do that because he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or she loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, one person can have all these seven qualities. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us among them. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and our family and our iman. And we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are Muslims. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.